Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thanks for tuning into another Super Tease video. We've got a big class tuning update coming in on April 11th. These are going to be changes that affect you before the end of season one and might impact your ability or your decision making on what types of classes you're going to be bringing to what types of content in the game. If you're looking for competitive play and if you want to make sure that you're staying up to date with changes related like this, entertaining and educational videos, then do make sure to hit the subscribe button. Your support is greatly appreciated on my long term goal of getting to 100,000 subscribers and my aim is to be as amazing of a resource as I can be for you. So let's get started without further ado. We continue to monitor the performance of classes across various content, including raids, Mythic Plus, Dungeons, and PvP below. You will find a number of changes meant to balance classes against each other in healing, tanking, and damage in various content. Death Knights, what are you guys getting? Developers notes that high at high haste levels, it was possible for someone Gargoyle to lose casts of Gargoyle Strike. To help remedy that, we are reducing the cast speed of Gargoyle Strike to 2.5 seconds, up from two while increasing the damage done to compensate for the slower cast time. We're also making some targeted tuning adjustments to Unholy to increase their damage outside of their three minute cooldowns. This is the type of paragraph that I really like to see. So what's gonna be going on exactly? Raise dead damage increased by 10%. Army of the dead damage increased by 10%. Does this also mean abomination? Scourge strike damage increased by 20%. That's pretty significant. Clawing shadows, 20% damage increase. Death coil is gonna be getting a 10% damage increase but will not be affected in PvP combat. And Soul Reaper damage has been increased by 15% for Unholy only. Gargoyle Strike, of course, going up to a 2.5 cast speed, but getting a 25% damage buff. This is a very big damage buff for Unholy DK. Like, we didn't really see a lot of them. They were starting to fall off. This, this is looking like a pretty spicy, spicy little buff here for you Death Knight players. Balance Druid. Star Surge damage increased by 10%, but this will not affect PvP combat. Apparently, they think that we're too good. You know, the three of us that are doing good on the ladder rest of you guys that are you're struggling too much you don't get no buffs sorry i guess it's just a get good type of deal here however denizen of the dream damage will be getting a 20 percent damage buff which is those little proc fey dragons and i mean 20 percent of two is not very much um so it's not probably negligible Guardian Druid. Health and healing received gain from Mastery. Nature's Guardian increased to 70% up from 50. Bark skin cooldown has been reduced to 45, down from a minute. Ooh, that could be really good with your set bonuses. Ooh. This, this, this is a juicy buff for Guardian. Preservation Evoker. Uh, preservation's overall throughput is lower than we'd like to see. Uh, since the life bind and temporal anomaly reductions, we're compensating for this adjustment in other areas, particularly Living Flame, where its healing component can sometimes feel like luster. You're getting a 3% overall healing buff, and Living Flame specifically will do 15% more healing. Resonating Sphere now will also apply Echo to the first five allies it passes through. Previously, it was first four, so you're going to get some you know raid healing, some single target burst healing. These are pretty significant uh, for pvp for beast mastery hunters you're seeing a three percent damage reduction for you and your pets again i don't know they just like the number three but uh, i feel like beast mastery hunters are dominating when it comes to pvp so three i doubt you're even going to feel that survival hunter uh this change was intended to have gone live in a prior tuning pass but a data error was made and we are now correcting that the damage dealt by mongoose bite and pvp will be unchanged by this adjustment mongoose bite is going to be doing 10 percent less damage so survival only in pve nerf for Prop Paladin, Hand of the Protector will now increase Word of Glory's healing by up to 100% when cast on allies. It was previously 250%. Pretty significant nerf um, for off-healing and PvP to Prop Pally. Um, for Priest, Holy Nova damage getting a 30% buff. I don't know if there's any Holy Nova talents that you might want to consider picking up with this buff, but definitely worth looking at your talent tree if there are. For Discipline, we are aiming to bring Discipline's mana consumption in line with other healers. As we've observed, the spec consistently running out of resources before other healers throughout Dragonflight. Separately, Powered Shield has been weaker than intended relative to other Atonement Appliers, so we're increasing its power. Powered Shield will now cost 2.4% of your base mana down from 3.1, and Powered Shield will now absorb 25% more damage for Discipline. That is insanely strong. Renew will now cost 2.4% of your base mana down from 2.7 and they fixed a bug causing Renew to not have its healing increased by 25% for Discus. What? 25% buff to Renew and its mana reduction? And Radiance is getting a 4.5% mana cost down from 5.5. I mean, Priest might be back after that. You guys kind of disappeared to Shaman and Mistweaver, but that is a big one for Disc Priest. For Holy, uh, Holy's damage profile is behind other healers in Dungeon and Raid content, so we're uh, targeting buffs towards their overall damage kit. You're going to see Holy Fire getting a 15% damage buff and Smite getting a 30% damage buff. I think it's probably likely because Holy's damage is more oriented around single target. This Holy Nova maybe maybe helps you out with AoE on trash pulls, but this is a decent damage buff um, for PvP specifically, but we'll have to wait and see if the PvP changes can hit anything else as well for Holy Priest. For Resto Shamans, we are happy with the 
the reception of restoration in 10.0.7. The specialization's healing power is above our target in all content, so we're adjusting it in line with our expectations. A 5%, 5.5% healing reduction, which might sound like, oh my god, how are you nerfing healers um, with how strong you know damage is in PvP? But we'll have to wait and see for the PvP specific changes to see, you know, does this make any sense or is it just totally off base? For druids, they're gonna be reducing the mana cost of cyclone. I don't know if this is for all druids or not. Um, or they're just trying to encourage Resto Druids to be aggressive and use Cyclone to stop damage. Um, but it's high mana cost is definitely a reason for not really wanting to bother trying to go for it because you, you know, you would just run out of mana and risk your life at the same time. So I do like encouraging um, Cyclone use more, uh, and this should do that. For Mistweaver Monk uh, specifically, we are specifically targeting Blackout Kick's AoE damage potential as we feel Mistweaver's healing becomes overwhelming when it can cleave its damage. We also feel Mistweaver's mana regeneration has been too powerful, so we're adjusting Spirit of the Crane heavily. Rising Sun Kick no longer deals increased damage in PvP, so it's a 12.5% nerf. Blackout Kick copies from Teaching of the Monastery no longer deal increased damage in PvP, a 15% nerf. And and Spirit of the Crane now restores 0.8% of mana and PvP combat down from 0.45%. So Fist Weaving, these are pretty substantial. It might be dead. I'm not. It honestly might be dead. Um, especially depending on what they've done to Rhett. For Windwalker, we fixed an issue that caused the copied Black Oak Kicks from Teaching of the Monastery to deal 15% increase in PvP damage instead of the intended 30%. This type of stuff makes me wonder, like, you know, how much stuff is just, like, not doing what it's supposed to be doing because that's, that's like, you're doubling um, the damage from your Blackout Kicks. So that's a pretty big buff to sustain damage for Windwalker. Definitely something to keep an eye on. For Holy Paladins, we are seeing targeting buffs towards their instant healing for Word of Glory and Holy Shock. So Word of Glory is getting 15% healing buff, and Holy Shock is getting a 15% healing buff as well. For Retribution Paladins, Retribution Paladin has remained more powerful than we would like in PvP. With this pass, we are targeting its burst damage, allied support, and personal survivability. So this is this is the sledgehammer, right? This is the one, like, are you getting knocked out or not? Because this is, this is way more than 3%. Avenging Wrath now increases damage and healing uh, by 10% PvP, so 5% nerf to Avenging Wrath. Avenging Wrath Might now increases critical strike uh, by 10%, down from 5, 15%. And Divine Protection now only reduces damage taken by 10%, down from 20%. That's pretty substantial. Light's Celerity now increases the healing of flash of light by 20 percent pp combat down from 50 that's a big one sanctified plates now grants 50 percent less stamina and avoidance in pvp combat so you're getting even less tanky blessing of sacrifice now transfers 20 percent of the damage taken down from 30 so if it's you know on a threshold where you might die i think we had a moment in the tournament today where um, one of the warlocks i think it was nick was like one percent healthy at sacrifice on him and he lived so if this was in he wouldn't have not have lived in that situation so both substantial and maybe not so substantial um the avenging wrath nerfs probably not going to feel it as much as um the personal survivability ones i think you might be it might be possible to kill a ret through divine protection now it might even be possible to kill a target through sacrifice uh we're gonna have to wait and see these ones are definitely more in line of like moving them in the right direction without overdoing it or underdoing it than the three percent that we saw earlier um definitely a lot more on point i would say back to like the way the changes were feeling prior to the ret rework so really nice to see that this is still ongoing and not just kind of like forgotten for demonology warlock we are toning down the value of immutable hatred as it's providing a significant boost to single target damage in pvp while being difficult to avoid immutable hatred now increases your primary felguard's legion strike damage by 60 percent when it damages one target in pvp down from 120 that is a huge nerf to that oh my god i don't even know if it was the damage profile of demonology that was really the big problem it was more the survivability i i, I was starting to feel but that's a ooh, ouchie Ouchie, ouchie. I mean, they're hitting a lot of the specs. Bit surprising to not see them target Arms Warrior for any nerfs. Um, as it's so, it, I think it's going to immediately be prevalent um, after this round of changes. Red seems like it's overall a good direction. The Warlock one's going to be, you know, hitting the damage pretty significantly. Nice to see them bringing up some of the other specs that are definitely, you know, feeling the pain of the over nerfs uh, from earlier on. And maybe they weren't even over nerfs. This is other specs got buffed even more beyond them. Um, so nice to see that uh, overall with these round of changes. Excited to see what it's like on Tuesday because I feel like a lot of people have started leaving the game with how prevalent Rep Paladins were. So let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of these changes? This is enough to get you coming back to the game. Remember, it's the end of the season. Last chance to push for some of these exclusive mounts, whether to your Elite set uh, or your Gladiator title and your Gladiator mount. It looks like that model might be really rare given that the next season's Gladiator mount is a completely different dragon. So really important season if you're looking to gun for these rewards. Definitely going to be 
um, evening the playing field more come Tuesday and making for the end of season to be, I would think, at least slightly more enjoyable um, than it currently is after that rework and all the fist weaving builds that we've started to see. So I'm very happy to see uh, these changes coming through. Kind of wish that they could have been sooner than later uh, before the tournament, honestly, but uh, still glad that they're going to be happening. So thank you very much for watching the video, and I will catch you in the next one.